As Barbara's mother and father have become increasingly skillful at helping her develop language, it has become clear that a special time and place for concentrated activity is better for daily family routine. Perhaps even more important, they know from experience that to be prepared makes for both enjoyment and success. It's evening, grown-up time, and Barbara is sleeping peacefully. Mrs. Carter is finishing plans for Barbara's lesson the next day. What's the matter, Sue? Well, oh, this darn box just won't work. Just can't make it work. Let me see it. See? We stay together. Oh, you do have a mess here. I think I've got some tape out there in the garage that I can fix it with. Okay. I'll take it out. With a little paint left over from the lawn furniture, so I thought I'd make this a first-class job. Oh, that's beautiful. That's look. Be careful, it's a little wet. Yes. Huh? That's lovely. And look what I've done. I'm all ready for the next week. Mm -hmm. All set. One of the secrets of keeping any child's interest is to use different materials or activities each day. Barbara has played a great variety of games for lip reading, first with airplanes and later with shoes. She's been involved in all sorts of activities while learning the word up. Well, we'll need this tomorrow. We haven't used this for a long time, and Barbara loved it. Mm-hmm. I don't blame her. I sort of like that one myself. I don't need this. For tomorrow's venture, the checklist includes pencil and paper, attractive materials, appropriate games, and a pleasant setting. Toys are placed so that Mrs. Carter, not Barbara, has control of them. The stage is all set. Find the shoe. Yeah. Hey, there's the shoe. That's the shoe. Where's the shoe? Yes, Mrs. Carter, the peep box is a success. Barbara knows from previous experience that there will be interesting things to do. Naturally, some are more so than others, yet all are fun. The sort of fun and learning that should go on all day long with this additional specific practice. Something wrong, Barbara? We have to do one more shoe. Then we can play with the milk bottle. After all, a circus would be boring if seen every day. Then we'll play with the milk pop, okay? Where's the shoe? There. Okay. We're all through. We can get the milk bottle now.
Wait, Barbara. Clean Trouble up. seems to be brewing. How will Mrs. Carter handle this? First, she explains what is to be done in a matter-of-fact yet vivid way. The game is shortened, so there's no danger of expecting too much. Mrs. Carter is not coaxing or begging. Let's go. Not till then. Okay? Not it's apparent then. that Barbara wants to go ahead with this activity. She knows how to do this auditory response. She's feeling fine, too. At this point, however, Barbara prefers to put her mother to a test. She's saying, how far can I go in running this show? Or other shows? To put it in another way, she is saying no, generally, rather than saying it to anything related to her lesson. There are certain areas where parents must guide and make decisions for their children. In this case, Barbara doesn't understand the importance of developing language, nor will she for a long time to come. Barbara's parents know that they must decide for Barbara. I know the wind's blowing, but we've got to do two more pins first. Barbara, let's do two more pins first. Trying to distract won't work, Barbara. Mrs. Carter keeps out other possible points of controversy. One point of contention is enough. Could she be sleepy? Hardly. She's bored since there's nothing for her to do, except the interesting activity at hand. This, in essence, is Mrs. Carter's most effective tool. She maneuvers the situation so that Barbara has the choice of the activity or boredom. Then she waits. Barbara's thinking over the situation carefully again. This is what her mother wants, for her to decide that it's not only easier but more fun to finish the game. She's found the limits, and she's coming to an important decision. Okay, listen. Good, okay. At last, Mrs. Carter realizes that Barbara needs to save face. So she helps her finish as if nothing had happened. Mrs. Carter will shorten this activity and end the entire lesson while Barbara's enthusiasm is high. Both have had something of a test. easy to help your child to accept a limit, especially the first, since it's always the hardest. How do you feel, Mrs. Carter? I'm proud of Barbara, and I'm proud of myself. We both know where we stand. Mm -hmm. There'll be other times, both during lessons and in the course of the day, as Barbara learns about living. But by meeting a crisis early in life, she and her mother can look forward to fewer and shorter tests of limits. Barbara, by knowing and accepting her few necessary boundaries, will feel more at ease in all that she does. Mm -hmm.